So now let's learn and explore the concept of GSI in DynamoDB a little bit more in detail by performing a very simple lab because we understand better by actually performing or doing labs. So I'll be showing you both how to create those GSI index using serverless framework and then how can we query through UI and through Python code as well. I saw so many Stack Overflow people have been having a hard time with that. So let's learn a, a little bit, okay? So what is the concept here? We are, we are essentially simulating a very simple scenario here. A user has several products, right? User like product one, product two, user two like product one, three, two, and so on, right? So my access pattern here is for a given user, give me all the products, right? For a given user, give me a product one, right? You can say equal to begins with all the sort operation. So my this is my PK, this is my SK, right? We, we all know that. Now say you have a feature, you need a new feature where you need to see for a given product, who are the users who are interested in that product or who like the order or, or essentially who ordered that product, etc., 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 right? So, well, scan queries, you can run a scan query, but that's inefficient. That's gonna scan the entire table. And as table grows, very inefficient. A better way would be to set up a GSI. What if I can set up this as a PK and this as an SK? So now I can say for my product one, give me all the users, right? So let's learn now, okay? So we, we know the concept now, right? Uh, again, a little bit theory uh, without going too much crazy. Uh, GSI allows you to have a different PK and SK. LSI allows you to have a different SK and the same PK. Maximum 20 GSI per table, maximum 5 LSI per table, all right? So let's get started with the, with the, with the exercise. So here we are saying, um, defining the service, the framework, the provider and the .env. Here is where we create the, the, the table. So here I'm saying table name is equal to $env .table name, which means I have a file called env and from that use the variable value, whatever I have provided, right? So attribute definition, I'm saying user ID and product ID. These are my two attributes, right? And key schemas are basically as follow. User ID is hash and product ID is range as shown in my Excel sheet here, okay? So this should be pretty much clear. Billing mode is paper request, which means we are using on-demand mode. Uh, DynamoDB has two modes, on-demand and provision. We are using an on-demand mode here. Table class is standard. DynamoDB offers an infrequent access as well, which means you save 60% on the cost. But for this example, I'm using a standard class. Point in time recovery essentially allows you if the table is accidentally deleted, it allows you to recover your data uh, or essentially back up your, get the, restore the table, right? That's what it means. And here is the magic that is a GSI. Here we are saying that we want to create a global secondary index. The index name would be product ID. That's my hash key and followed by my sort key. And I'm using the word index. Here I'm defining my index here. Those are the key attributes, right? Attribute product ID and attribute user ID. So what I'm saying is here, this is my normal PK and SK. And now I have a further access pattern where I want to query on my product ID. So hence I set up my product ID as my PK and user ID as my SK, which is what you see here. You can add up to 20 GSI per table, right? Projection all means project all the attributes here, right? So uh, now we come here to the lab. And I've already deployed this uh, in advance. So you can say SLS deploy. And this will essentially deploy your entire stack. And again, I have already deployed it. So it might give me an error, right? So uh, once you're done that, um, you know, this will essentially create uh, a table for you on the cloud. So over here, this will create a table called dev.user.products. Okay, so this is a table. Now we need to populate that. So again, as you can see, I already have a table. Now we need to populate the table with some dummy or fake data. So what we will do is you will call the function called populate tables here and run the Python code. This will populate the data, uh, table with some dummy data. I've already done that. I already have some data here, as you can see, uh, if I can show you here, I think I have about 100 samples here. So if you come here, explore, I already have about uh, enough data here for my uh, exploratory purposes, right? Let me just do a scan here, right? I have a lot of data already here, okay? So now I'll show you how to query, right? My first access pattern is uh, the query, right? So for a given user, give me all the products or fetch all the product, right? So we'll say for a, for a, we'll use the first one here. So we'll say for a given user, show me everything. So these are all the products for a given user. If you know which product you're looking for, you can use a sort key to do a filter, right? So you can say product ID is equal to this one. And it's pretty, pretty, pretty fast. It's very fast. Now, 
you have a second access pattern based on the GSI. So now on the dropdown, there's a, uh, as you can see, there's a GSI called product ID. So now I can do the reverse, right? So I can say for product ID two, give me all the users, right? So I can run this. And here you can see for product two, there are user one, two, three, four, five, much more efficient, right? All right, so this makes sense to the UI. Now, if I want to fetch the user or I want to do some filter operation, I can use my sort key to do the filter, right? Now, how do I do that in the code, right? How do I write the Python code? Okay, let me show you that. So the first, I'll show you how to query regular, right? So what you want to do is I have defined the user model here. Here you can see my table name, AWS access key and secret ID. These are my schema, user ID as hash key, product ID as my range key. And now if needed, I can run saying that user model dot query, give me, uh, so what I'm saying here is give me uh, everything for user two, right? So again, if you want, you can further run the sort operation. Right, so for example, really quick, I want to show you. So this will query based on my PK now, right? So I'm saying for, um, sure enough, it works, right? So I'm saying for basically a user uh, to give me all the products. So these are all the products, right? You could run a sort query, begins y equal to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how do we query GSI? That's the tricky part where people, I saw like people were struggling, stack overflow, stack overflow. I was like, okay, let me make a video. So the way you do that is first, you need to define a view index. So observe how I'm doing it. So view index, I'm inheriting this from global secondary index. I'm providing a meta class where I'm providing the index name, projection as all, and I'm providing my AWS access and secret key. Here I'm only giving the attribute that is my sort and my hash key. So here I'm, I wanna query on user ID and product ID, right? So my product ID is the hash key, right? And my user ID becomes a secondary key. Uh, again, based on the Excel sheet that we just saw, right? Hopefully this should make sense, right? Now, what we do is we again make a model. Uh, you can name it anything. I just named it test model. This will inherit from model. And here you will provide a meta class and you will provide the base table name. And then here you will essentially give all your attributes that you have on the table. So I know I have user product, product name and description. Now to query GSI, you will use this class and not the view index, okay? A lot of people are confusing on this, right? So now if you observe my query GSI. So here you can see test model dot two. So what this is gonna do is basically for product to give me all the user, right? So if we run query GSI function, and if I simply run the Python code, you should see all the user uh, for that particular product uh, here. Again, these are all the users, right? Works fantastic. Uh, you can use dot two JSON method, or if you just wanna fetch a particular field, you could also do that by just using the dot operator. Let's say I wanna, just I'm interested in the user ID. So you could say dot user ID, and this will only fetch those particular user or those particular attributes, right? So here you can see works fine, right? So yeah, this is basically all about GSI, a small lab uh, about GSI. I, I hope your concepts are cleared, right, about GSI. We'll explore LSI in the next lab, right? So again, just a refresher, right? Again, uh, yeah, this is an article that, that uh, I have, this is the uh, image that I've taken from AWS, same concept, right? User have several, several game title and top score. So here the access pattern is, okay, for a user, give, it, give me the game title, uh, for a given user filter uh, by on game title, right? So what if you wanna implement a leaderboard, right? For example, I wanna see who, which user scored maximum score for a game, right? So in that, in that scenario, I want my game title to be my PK and my user ID to, to be my SK, right? Or my top score to be SK so I could filter out, right? So that is exactly what the, uh, this author shows in the blog post, right? So now I can say for a given game, that is Galaxy Invaders, right? I can grab all the scores, right? I could essentially get the max and I could say, uh, see which user was that, right? So a leaderboard, right? So I hope your GSI concepts are clear with the simple lab. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, this video, make sure to give a thumbs up. And now in the next video, we'll see a lab on uh, LSI.